saw today sort of sets the scene where we are in the race for the White House. You've got Donald Trump physically in one courtroom for one federal case, his legal team physically in another courtroom for a different legal case that's turned into somewhat of a circus. And then you have the president of the United States making a major policy announcement and the White House having to come back, Chris, and correct the president. Yeah, I mean, I, the look on, I don't know who uh, that staffer was who was seated in the chair. <laughs> I think Italian prime minister next. Oh, my gosh, that's even worse. Oh, that's even worse. <laughs> yeah. you, you've got company over uh, at, the, at the house, and then you do that. And the look, the fact that the, her face fell, right? You could just see the, oh, like, oh, I know. And this is the thing about narrative. Um, in 1992 uh, and before, George H.W. Bush had been branded a wimp. He was a wimp, George H.W. Bush, who, by the way, got shot down yeah. uh, in the South Pacific fighting the Japanese at age 17, and was a, it was a serious stud. Greatest Americans, one of the greatest Americans of all time. But he was branded a wimp, and once the name sticks to you, and once the brand sticks to you, everything you do hmm. reinforces that, and that's the problem that Biden has as he's trying to run. Or more scrutiny, if you will. Now, listen, misspeaking. And given the legislative issues and political issues regarding Ukraine and Israel funding and what have you, misspeaking on a subject like that is not in and of itself some test of mental acuity. In fact, I'd like to blame the Republicans for, for screwing him up and, and his misspeaking <laughs> because they've linked the two together. But the bottom line is this. Uh, he shouldn't be, but I think Chris makes a great point. Once you get labeled something, yes. the media is going to report every time he misspeaks now as some attack on his age or mental acuity. Wait, wait, but mental acuity. Normally, I'd hammer Biden for mental acuity. Now, let's remember, on Tuesday, 100,000-plus voted uncommitted because of his position on the Hamas-Israel war. Mm -hmm. And on Friday, I'm airdropping into Gaza. This looks a lot like naked political vote buying. No, not really. You know why? Because you also had the crisis of uh, 100 people being killed who were yeah, trying to get food. And whether it's Israel's fault or whether they open fire or not, the bottom line is the pressure to uh, provide relief to these Palestinians, this collateral damage, which is growing on the U.S. Which which Hamas Hamas well, look, this well, is the second not. time we've seen this happen with President Biden mixing up something when talking about this conflict. If you're a Republican ally, Maker. You are watching this and you are going to just have to cherry pick these moments and put them together. So, you know, it all it happens to us all. But like Chris says, once you're labeled something, it's going to stay. By, by the way, we haven't even mentioned today that Donald Trump, the former president of the United States, the Republican, essentially de facto uh, What's the uh, not, not the, presumptive, uh, presumptive well, nominee? There we go. I was losing a word. Soon, the soon, to, be, soon, soon yeah. to be presumptive nominee. Lauren, we haven't even gotten into that today. Thank you for watching, and make sure you go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.